Hello everyone, this is Darwell20, and welcome to episode 54 of Darwell20's Let's Play series, where I am moving my frame machine down a little bit. Hooray! That shouldn't be too broken. Boy, I hope. Alright, I think... I think that's cool. I think. Should we test it? feel like we should test it real quick. So move forward, buddy. Go. Beautiful. Haha, <laughs> it still works. Nice. So I moved him down to, this is at 131. This is at 130. Okay. Uh, and as a reminder, the lowest Y, or the highest Y level that we found is 129? 130. 130. Okay, that's fine, because as long as it's not above 131, because remember, if I use the frame machine correctly that I'm building, right, it should break the blocks at 131, right? So if it, what'll happen is like, let's say, you know, 130, 130, yeah, 130 is about the highest that I'm seeing here. Uh, this one's 131, that's all right, we'll figure it out. Um, if it becomes a problem, I can always put like drills on the front or something. Um, but yeah, these guys are at 130, this is at 131. So let's simulate having a block at 130. Let's simulate having a block at 130 and see what happens. So I'm thinking the mechanical drill here might have a problem with him, but that's okay. We should be fine now, we'll see what happens. All right, um, so let's get you here-ish. And then I've got more updates for you guys in a moment as to what kind of good stuff I managed to figure out off camera while I was preparing for today's episode. So that should be one block forward. Okay, now I'm assuming that you won't be able to move forward into that block. Oh, he was able to and he broke the block in front of it. Well, that's exciting. That's actually kind of cool. Now, is that because you're a drill block or what's the deal? Let's try that again. Boop. Boop, boop. Oh, that's neat. That's interesting. He moved back again. All right, well, that's fine. So 131 might be too high, but 130 should be fine. Yeah, that looks good. And then we can drop, boom, do your thing. Hooray! So I spent a good amount of time off camera uh, trying to figure out what mod I can use that meets the following criteria. Can connect to a chest that is moved and then removed and moved again. So in other words, a chest that goes away and comes back and goes away and comes back, AKA that chest down there. Uh, and then I also needed it to be okay moving on frames. So I tried many of the pipe mods that we have available. I tried mechanism pipes, was not happy. Uh, didn't, wasn't a big problem, just can't be moved. So like if you try to move mechanism pipes, the they just say, no, I can't be moved, and that's the end of it. Other mods had more problems than that. Uh, pretty pipes and refined pipes, both of them totally crash the game as soon as you try to move them. So don't recommend doing that, right? That's not a good idea. Um, however, I did find that modular routers, I also tried XNet, by the way. XNet didn't crash, but as soon as the frame platform moved, XNet lost connection to the blocks it was touching. Item router from modular routers seems to be cool. He doesn't have any problems. He doesn't require power. He can transfer items around from adjacent inventories directly. Uh, and he's, he's pretty quick. So modular routers was the winner here. Uh, so this is a block that is, is pretty complicated, but also really powerful. You can do some really cool things with modular routers. And as we progress through the series, you might find some complicated things that need doing that I can use modular routers for. But it can do a lot of things. It can transfer fluids around, it can break blocks and distribute items, it can drop items in the world, it can pick up items from the world, it can place world blocks, it can do all kinds of things. Um, so there's a lot that modular routers can do. I'm using a very simple set of instructions. So basically the way modular routers works is it's an item in the world and you place modules in these slots along the bottom and these modules will execute in the order that you've placed them in the block. Uh, so for example, I've set up a polar module uh, and you can see here, press C or middle click to configure the polar module. I've decided that the polar module should pull items out of the right of this block. So whatever's to the right of it, it will pull items out of it. 
and it has a little internal buffer here that I can go ahead and handle uh, items sitting in. And then it'll send modules, and if we configure this guy, we'll see it's sending to the back of the block, which is the ender chest. Uh, so long story short, this guy, is he still running? No, he looks like he finished. So let's see how far he got. So he dug down to Y level three. That is not bad. So we literally hit one block above bedrock is what's broken. Look at that. One block above. I'll take that. I'll call that good enough. I'm cool with that. We might move him up one more because we know that we might run into a problem if we hit into a block that's 131. So we might move the whole structure up one block. But for now, I'm just going to leave it as is. So I think it's cool, right? So now we can fly out of this here area and decide to uh, call that a win. I definitely think that's a win, right? And how do we do with uh, resources, by the way, from that, from that? Not bad. So the next thing I need to do is find out if I can have a bigger chest. Um, and the reason I say that is because I'm not done with this frame machine by any stretch of the imagination, right? This is doing a good job, but today's episode is let's kick it up a notch. Let's make it a little bit more ridiculous. Um, so we're going to pull you up. And he should come up nice and quickly because we've got the high speed stuffs happening. Whee! Up and up and up we go. Whoop! And then as soon as it gets here, you can see the modular router is working. And guess what? He's pulling stacks at a time out of here. Now, by default, he only pulls one item out. But if you put a stack upgrade, he'll put in two items out. And if you put two stack upgrades, he'll pull four items out. And then eight. 16, 32, 64. So six stack upgrades equals 64 items per transaction. And it looks like it pulls out every half second or so. So pretty quickly it clears out that chest, dumps everything into the under chest, and Bob's your uncle, right? So for example, if I look up piston extension poles, we have 57. If there were piston extension poles in this chest, they would get pulled out. And now if we look at piston extension poles, there's 121, because they got pulled out of here by this guy and shoved into there. And then the ender chest back at my base is configured to import everything into the refined storage system. So that is a, what I wanna say, fully functioning frame system. Like I said, I, I spent probably a good half hour, 45 minutes figuring out what blocks or, or piping system would make the most sense to use um, for, for what we're doing here. Uh, and modular routers seems to be the winner. He doesn't have a problem being moved. A lot of blocks didn't mind that the chest was moving, but as soon as you tried to move the whole platform forward one block, it either didn't move the block or crashed the game or corrupted the world. So FYI, anytime you're playing with, uh, with, 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 with this mod uh, or any mod that's moving blocks. So Minecraft really is not designed for blocks to, especially tile entities to be moved around. Tile entities do not expect to be moved. Right? So some of them handle it okay if they don't care about their position in the world. Like modular routers, he's pulling from whatever block is on his right and pushing to whatever block's in front of him. He doesn't seem to care what his XYZ position is at the moment. So, eh? Now there might be other modules that do care and maybe they wouldn't behave on a moving platform and they might be relative to his current position. So as long as he doesn't care about where he currently is, he's okay. But other mods might be recording the position of the block and get really confused if that block ain't there no more. Uh, so long story short, you should probably be careful anytime you're working on a moving structure. This isn't exclusive to create. This is to any mod that moves tile entities around because tile entities like chests and anything that has data, just really don't expect to be moved. It's just not part of the normal operation. So if you're using my pad, you can use uh, FTB backups start, and that'll kick off a backup. It gets stored in your world save as a backup. So in case you're playing with this and your world gets broken, you uh, have a backup available to you that you can go ahead and restore, which I had to do three times, just FYI. Restored three backups while playing with putting pipes on this thing. Um, so just as an FYI. So this thing's doing a really good job is what I would say, right? I'm very pleased with his progress. Um, let's amp it up. So all we really need to do now is get more of all these blocks. Cool. We're going to see just how big we can make this drilling machine. All right. So I'm crafting up a bunch of drills. Uh, we're going to get some linear chassis as well. So that looks cool. Linear chassis, let me get four more of those. I just kind of, you know, went with some random number. Drill, let's get two more. 
then if we're going to be doing 47, that looks cool to me. All right. So uh, did I need sticky on the bottom of this? I'm pretty sure I did. So basically what we want to do, right, is make sure, refresh my memory. Is there like a trick to place in this? I think it might need to be, you know what it is? I know what I'm going to do. Uh, I think if there's a block above it, it'll be easier. Do I have my gadget on me or is it in my bag? Oh, it's in my bag. Look at that. Sweet. So what I'm going to do is horizontal wall column. Right. Um, yeah, that should be cool. All right, what I'm going to do is close up the column from here. If I removed a uh, place on top, then it would extend out. Really, is that all the bricks I got on me? Now, I haven't exactly measured out how many of these I want to do, but we'll figure it out. But we can, in theory, do something bananas like this, right? So what do we got here? We got five, right? So I've got 47. Let's do one more. What? No wireless transmitter in range is lies. I guess I've gotten a little bit further from here. Uh, let's do 48, right? So I'm going to get one more drill. I'm going to get one more linear. Cool. And then we'll just do 24 and 24. Does that sound cool? We'll start with that. I don't know if there's a limit. I want to say it's 64 blocks. I want to say it's 64 blocks, but we'll find out, right? So, basically, we want all this to happen. And don't forget you can shift click with a wrench because it's a way easier way to block to break blocks that you didn't intend to break. Cool. So one more. And like in theory, I could totally, you know. Now let's see if you, so it's not a shift click. I really need to get a different form of flight, I'm going to say. It's, it's very hard to be precise with this jetpack. It's very fast, which I love. Don't get me wrong. I love how fast it is when I want to go fast. But it's also exceedingly fast when you don't want to go fast. <laughs> All right. So 24 on this side now. The other cool thing is it goes directly into your inventory when you do that. Okay, so you into the offhand. Now, that's all well and good. What I should have probably done, but I'm not going to worry about too much right now, but let's undo you guys. And you're no longer going to be needed because I placed you manually. Ditto to you. And that should work. You ready? <laughs> Whoop. <laughs> Loving it. Loving it. Now, here's the question is, can I put something like a diamond chest on here? Right? That might be a good thing to do. So can I replace you with a diamond chest and not have any problems, right? And what did I say? Always with the backups, because you never know if something's gonna break. Now, I'm gonna, it's unlikely that diamond chest will have a problem with this, right? But if you're not sure how a block is gonna handle being moved, you should make sure to make a backup. It doesn't hurt. Uh, I'm not gonna back up like every block I place. And obviously like vanilla blocks and create level blocks mostly should be fine, but you never know what another mod's interaction is gonna be. So let's see. 
Looks like he's working okay. So the question is, is he actually like receiving items, right? And is the answer no? The answer is no. Huh. So he didn't break nothing, but he also didn't work, which is kind of a bummer. Uh, so that is actually a bummer. Why wouldn't an iron chest accept items? Hmm. Hmm. That's weird. You would think that it would. What else have we got in here by way of storing lots of items? What else have we got? Uh, there's quartz chests. There's... Quartz chests is kind of cool. I'm thinking ender chest directly might not work. I don't know. I'm thinking no. I don't think, I don't think it would... Because it's an entity while it's moving, it's not going to... I don't think. Although it might. I don't know. I could just try throwing the ender chest directly on there and see what happens, right? Um, while it's moving, would it work? I have no idea. I have no idea. We're going to test it, though. We'll know if it picks up items. You know what we can look at is in the pouch. So I'm not seeing items showing up in there, so that's definitely a thing. I'm assuming there's going to be items all over the ground here. And yes, there are. So that tells me that's a big old nope. A big nope arino on ender chests directly working. I need more storage because if we're going to be moving this giant contraption, a vanilla chest, as you saw, I almost filled up a vanilla chest when I had five drills. So what do you think is going to happen when I have 50? Yeah, it's exactly what you think is going to happen is what's going to happen. So, you know, keep that in mind. Uh, so you're not going to work under chest. What other storage options might I have? Let me look into this a little bit here. We've got, um, iron chests. Um, all right, this may sound crazy, but this might be my only course of action right now is to just have a bunch of chests on here with a bunch of ender chests on here. And a bunch of modular routers all here all configured kind of the same way so what we want i'm going to see if i can bulk this but the sender modules should send to the left and the puller modules should pull from the right right so you're going to pull from the right and send to the left so if i just do boop boop right you and you and just out of curiosity okay now can't mouse pull, but now you go in there and they should pull. Oh, you know what else I need is stack upgrades. Yeah, I forgot about those. Let me get these put in. So pull, push, pull, push, pull, push, pull, push, pull, push. We're getting there. Pull, push already. Pull, push. And they'll loop around, so technically if I did push-pull, like just the first time it would fail, and the next time it would be whatever, right? Uh, and then I need six times eight of the stack upgrades, so 48 stack upgrades. Uh, let me just add those to my to-do, 48. We're gonna need more paper. Luckily, I automated sugarcane a little bit ago. 48 of those, and then I need 48 bricks of you guys. That should be cool. And that should happen very quickly, by the way. And then we should have no problems making that happen. Beautiful. So if I shift click you, do you work? Yes. Nice. That makes things a little bit easier. So I'm pretty sure what'll happen is as these guys all kind of behave, uh, what should happen, what should happen is that it'll just kind of pick any chest to insert items into. And if we have to extend this further, we will, right? Theoretically, I might need a few more chests for this to work, but we're going to find out what happens, right? But in theory, this should work. Maybe we want to expand this platform a little bit larger so that we can have more of these, but this should work. I can't, I can't find any other inventory that Create wants to insert into. So I don't know if Create is specifically saying 
vanilla chests or if there's something funny with iron chests. But I would realistically expect iron chests to work, right? So let's get ready to watch and see what happens when we pull this guy up, right? Haha, <laughs> look at them all open at once. Boom. Yes, all the things are happening. Nice. Look at that. So it is actually working. You are taking your sweet time though, aren't you? I think we're cool though. It looks like it put most things in here. So maybe, you know, it's all good. Look at that though. How cool is that? That is a world eater, my friends. That may be one of the largest world eaters we've ever made. Look at it go. I mean, in fairness, some of these things ain't here, but that's okay. How cool is that? Nice. That is really neat. I'm going to let that go all the way down to what is effectively bedrock. Literally one block above, but that's okay. We'll be fine. It's probably gonna annoy some of you that we're one block above bedrock, but let's let it go all the way down. Then what I'm gonna do is push the whole thing forward and run an entire cycle and see how it does. So the good news is when it gets to the bottom, we can access the chests. So that guy filled up, that guy filled up, that guy didn't fill up, actually not terrible. However, keep in mind that there's definitely a portion of this area had already been, been mined. Now, there are speed upgrades we can stick in those modular routers, FYI. So if they are too slow about transferring into the, into the chests, we can make them run a little bit quicker. I might want to try those real quick. So modular routers does have speed upgrades, which I think is this guy. I don't know how many they can have, but we're gonna find out. Oh, well, there's a stack of them. Sweet, what's the max speed upgrades that I can stick in this thing? Nine would be the answer to that question. Nine, indeed. So I really only need 18 more speed upgrades? I can make that happen. Might as well, right? And that should make things run a little bit quicker this time. So here come all the chests, and let's see what happens when they all get here. Wee! It is so cool to watch that, by the way. Oh yeah, that's what's up. That's 100% what's up. We're gonna need more import speed on the uh, back back home. We're gonna need more input speed back home. <laughs> that's cool. Oh, that's cool. Oh, that's what's up. You know you've done a good job when your refined storage importer can't keep up. That's how you know. That's how you know you've done well. That's what's up. That's what's up. All right. So over here, we're going to want, like, let's say, I don't know, four more import buses, a couple stack upgrades, a few speed upgrades, and that should be what's up. So there's your importers. Uh, there's your four stacks. Here come your 12 speeds. That could be cool. Right, and then maybe a quickie cable. Cool, uh, so then you're gonna want stacks and speeds, right? Stack and speeds, stack and speeds, boom. And we'll just see if that is handy dandy enough to keep the thing a rolling, which it should be. We'll find out after the next iteration of Ridiculous Frame Machine. Loving it. Create, you make some cool stuff, let me just say. Big fan, big fan. Quite a few comments in the last episode though were like, hey, why, why do this? Oh good, it moves still. <laughs> I think that's the first time I've actually tested it moving forward <laughs> since I made such ridiculousness. You know, a lot of people were saying, I, surprising number of people commented, 
hey, Dyer, you can do this much smaller with a vanilla slime machine. And my response is, uh, but can it move tile entities? Can vanilla slime blocks move tile entities? I was pretty sure that's not a thing that can happen. Am I wrong about that? I don't know. Like, a lot of people were kind of commenting that, you know. I mean, at least, well, not last episode. I think two episodes ago. The one where I first built the inchworm drive. Um, so, I don't know. You guys are going to have to let me know, uh, you know, feedback on this video, what you thought. And if it's, if it's starting to come together in your brain as to why I did this ridiculousness, right? Hopefully it is. Hopefully you're like, oh, I get it now. But I guess we'll find out. So I'm going to let this come all the way down. And once it hits bedrock, plus one, I'll check the chests and see how full they are. Because I'm kind of curious to see. This is the first full set, right? So this is the first full from world top to bottom. Do I have enough inventory space in all my chests? Or do I have to expand the frame machine a little bit? We'll find out in just a minute. And we're mining. Boom. How'd we do? Well, time will tell, right? Uh, full, full, full. Looks like it starts from that end. Not bad. Not bad. Only about half our chests are full, which is good because if we were like borderline, I'd be concerned because the variety of ores might impact how many storage slots we have, right? If we ran into more variety next iteration, if we were like, you know, tight, but we're not tight, we're fine. We got plenty of storage space. So I think this is good, right? And then we should bring it up and see how quickly it does its thing. Now, the one other thing I'd like to do is consider how I can fully automate this, right? Because that's kind of the last step. But let's see how fast you manage to extract. Boom, look at it go. <laughs> that is cool that is cool all right and all the cobblestones being voided by the way which is nice to see that is what's up that is what's up and then it's just boop it forward and we do it again and we do it again world eater go so here's the deal um i could use a couple people commented that i should be using that thing that sequenced gear shift um He's not smart enough to realize that uh, blocks need to be broken. So if I used a sequence gear shift and said, you know, drop 128 blocks, it what it does behind the scenes is calculate how long it should take the frame to move 128 blocks and basically emit a redstone signal for that long. But it does not factor in the fact that there's drills on there that need to break things. So sequence gear shift is not what we want to do. What we should probably do is estimate how long it takes and use a timer of some sort to say like hey like when you get a redstone signal emit it here and keep it on for x amount of time and then turn it off and i feel like that could be accomplished with the rf tools thing right so uh what's it called again the sequencer or whatever uh the one that's groovy inventory checker analog counter sensor sequencer there we are hello sir Sequencer, 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 sequencer. Oh, look, I made a stack of these. Haha. <laughs> totally did that on purpose because it was annoying me not having any. Um, so what I should do is basically time how long it takes to mine to bedrock. So I'm going to do that off camera real quick, and then we're going to figure out our next steps. What I will probably want is this 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 and then like a button here and then we'll set it up so that i can hit the button it'll activate the sequencer right so you and we're gonna have to test to see will you rotate me no you're gonna be all kinds of a of a doofus <laughs> i just want orange on that side uh killing me smalls I wonder if you see, there we go, cool, there we are. All right, so orange on the output side, perfect. Uh, so you're going to, when a redstone signal is received, loop the cycle once, restart if a new pulse arrives. Mm. Loop the cycle all time, ignore, loop the cycle all the time, loop the cycle once it's a continue current step, loop the cycle, do one step in the cycle for every pulse. When a redstone signal is received, loop the cycle once, ignore further pulses. I think that's the way to go. I think that's the way to go, right? And then it's just a matter of figuring out how long we need to keep the redstone signal on to hit bedrock 
Wee! Hello, Lutz. How are you? Not bad. So we're definitely filling up about half our inventory, which is not too shabby, right? Not too shabby. So let's uh, move this forward one. I'm gonna time it and I'll come back and let you know how long it takes to reach from top to bottom. And then we'll add a few extra seconds in case we run into something like obsidian. And just check this out. If we search for diamonds in here, we have 61 diamonds. I know I've found some diamonds down there, so we should see 63 in a moment. Look at that, boom, boom. Everything's working, I love it. Okay, back in a minute. Also, this is gonna test to see if you have any problem moving but you don't seem to be, and it looks to me like you remembered your settings, I think, but we're gonna find out for sure, actually. Um, yeah, I'm gonna move it forward again in a minute, but starting timer now, I'll be right back. All right, so, reaching bedrock here, looking good. Hitting diamond. And the winner of time is two minutes and 40 seconds to hit this Y level. So that's about what we, so like, let's round it up to like three minutes, right? So we'll just say, emit a redstone signal for three minutes, turn off the redstone signal. Fair enough? I think that that's fair. Um, you know, uh, is, that, is that the way we wanna iterate this? I think so. So basically what we're looking to do is three minutes. So if we made our delay, so there's 64 of these, right? So, Basically, uh, let's see. So the delay, if we want it to be three minutes, let's make it like 10 seconds per iteration here. Does that seem like a nice easy number? So that would be 200 ticks for 10 seconds, right? So this would be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. One, two, three, four, five, six is two minutes. One, two, three, four, five, six is three minutes. And that should be groovy, right? And then we can do this, this, and this, and now a button. A button, button, my kingdom for a button. Boop. Cool, so let's retract you. We'll turn that into just a piece of redstone dust. Not that we need it to be redstone dust, but it'll help us visualize where we're at in the process. Boom. And now we've got this happening. <laughs> so cool, right? And then move you forward one. Let's make sure that you actually remember the settings that you've got. Hopefully you do. Yeah, you do. 200 tick delay, right? So each one of these boxes is now 200 ticks or 10 seconds. Right, and we did uh, 18 of these, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 16, 17, 18, which is three minutes. Cool, looks good to me. So now if I give you a signal, boom, he starts running, right? And you can see what step he's on. And every 10 seconds, it'll advance to a new step. Cool. Um, now he will need to be off all the time at the end there. So what I could always do, if we decide that we need to retract this, we can just break the redstone to bring it back up. And I think what I'm gonna do is set you to once two, which is when a redstone signal is received, loop the cycle once, restart if a new pulse arrives. What that'll do is make it so that when it receives a redstone signal, it starts going right away. Why are you done already? That was not, explain. Maybe because I was playing with it. So this should run for, you know, 10 seconds now per step. Yeah, it's probably because I changed the mode. It probably reset, but that's fine. So that should work, right? It should run for three minutes now, then retract, then be ready to move forward. And then we can push the button again to make it, you know, run again. And that, if we really wanted to, could be integrated into this some way, shape or form. I'd have to figure out how to get the redstone over there to over here, but like we could totally, finagle that a little bit um you know i'm just saying that's doable um let's think about that for a sec how would we do that i need a solid block so what if i did this i've reached the andesite age sweet um if I andesite casing you, 
and then sticky sticky okay um, and what we'd realistically need so I'm, I might want to get more linear chassis uh, let's do this 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 I can now break you two or three sticky sticky what length are you guys nine boop boop okay uh, just so I don't have to put glue in between each piece now on the top I definitely need the glue okay and what we could say is we want an adjustable repeater so your redstone turns on to retract the back end right so when you turn on let's give you like a 10 or let's make it a one second delay right one second after the back end is retracted you should be cool now are you still running you are okay so I'm going to remove this for a sec, maybe. Bueller. Finding the bounding box is a little bit weird, but I found it. Um, OK, cool. You're retracting now. So did you actually hit? I would expect you to have hit bedrock because you first off went a little bit early uh, and re-went. So that's cool. So now what we should see, we'll push it forward it'll move forward one and then a redstone signal will initiate the pulley system so now we have a one button push to make the whole thing move and do what we want it to do okay so what i'm going to do is enable you guys now if i connect you now he's going to start running again so i don't want that at this iteration so i'm going to move you forward one okay and then we'll do this and what we should see is a second later he'll start running Bueller. Bueller. Oh, there we go. Cool. Is step zero a thing? I guess so. So there might be a 10 second delay there. That's all right. Not a huge deal. So let's let that run. And when it's done, it should retract. It should have cleared this whole column. And then we'll push the button and see everything work. All right, you're ready? So he did hit bedrock, it looks like, which is cool. So now we push button, and it should run the whole thing. Boop. Boop. And then 10 seconds later, he should start mining. Ten seconds seems like a long time, doesn't it? it so does. Are you not behaving or what? Step 27. He should have... He should have... Maybe he didn't initiate correctly. Maybe he didn't turn off properly. There might be, there, no, there shouldn't be a delay. Oh, you know what, this guy, let's, let's make him not part of the picture. Does that seem fair? Because I think what's happening is um, this isn't off long enough for him. He's only off for 10 ticks. I mean, I could make it like a five tick delay or something like that, but we'll see. We'll see. He may not be necessary at all, especially if there's like a 10 second wait here. Maybe I'll make him, maybe I'll just do the five ticks just, just because. Man, finding the sweet spot of the bounding box. There's a little something funny with slime and the binding box or the bounding box here. Where indeed? Oh, gotcha. So what I'm going to do is maybe try this, but only with like three ticks, four ticks. Does that sound cool? I think that's cool. So this is probably restarting the timer. So we'll be back in three minutes. All right, so let's try this again with only a four tick delay. Hopefully he behaves a little better. Let's find out. So it'll move forward. The lights should go off. Now the lights should go on. And then boom, he should start mining right away. Perfect. That's actually beautiful. 
That's exactly what I wanted to see. Um, so there is no 10 tick delay here. I didn't think that would happen. It's probably just because it wasn't actually starting. So that's pretty cool. So literally now we have, every time this receives a redstone signal, that's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. I like that. I like that. I'm debating if I want to tweak this a little bit. Um, there's things we could do here, right? Uh, there's things we could do here to make this a little bit more foolproof. But for now, it feels really good. I ain't gonna lie, it feels really good. Literally press button once and it goes. Um, I don't know what would happen if it tried to move forward while this thing was running. I can only assume it would just not move, right? Um, maybe we should test that after a little backup. <laughs> I mean, we've got it running so smoothly now, I'm like, you know, backing up is a good thing to do at this point. And being able to run it with a simple command is not a bad idea, right? So what happens if I push button? It should just do nothing. Correct, correct. So if that thing tries to move forward while the mining is occurring, it will fail to move forward, which is perfect actually. Uh, because what that means is we can now set up some kind of timer here that runs maybe every three minutes uh, or three minutes, 30 seconds. And all we have to do is just say like, hey, every three minutes, 30 seconds, while, uh, you know, it's got a redstone signal on the back maybe. So what we could have is something like this here. I mean, we're getting really close to the wrapping up point, but you know, what we could easily have is just literally a, a sequencer here with a lever. And we would say, as long as that lever is on, emit a redstone signal for three minutes, 30 seconds, or three minutes, 10 seconds, or something like that. Uh, I would say three minutes, 30 seconds, because it takes a little bit of time for the crane to pull up, the pulley to pull the items back up. So giving it a good 30 seconds, and then you just have a lever, and you're done. So what we'd want to use is loop four here, and we would say loop the cycle when redstone signal is present, restart on no signal, right? So all we would have to do is have another delay of 200, and this time we would do... So this would be three minutes, 10, 20, 30 seconds, right? Um, is that what we want? No, because we want it to... Right, now we'd want it to pulse. So we'd want a pulser. Because we don't want it on for that long. We just want it to take that long to run. I'm not sure what this end on equals. But what we'd probably want is to pulse it. So let's do this. So if we make this 80 tick delay, it's four seconds, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32. So this is 32 seconds, 64 seconds. So that's one minute, right? Uh, two minutes, three minutes, four minutes. That could work. So what'll happen is when I give you a redstone signal, it'll pulse for a second. It'll move the whole thing forward. And what I probably want is a pulser, which I got. Cool. Um, and this will run every four minutes then, which should be fine, right? I mean, I could drop it down to 70 delay if I wanted it to be a little bit tighter on the timing, but I don't think that's terrible, right? So if I turn you on, what should happen is four seconds after I turn this on, it'll move the frame forward, and hopefully he'll remember what step he's at, but I guess we'll find out. But maybe him moving will reset him, and that might be bad, but we'll find out. Uh, and then we'll go from there. So let's see. So four seconds later. Boom. Seemed a little bit longer than four seconds, of course, but you know. Step three, step four, you get the idea. Cool, okay, that seems to be working. So it looks like he remembered where he was. So I'm gonna call this pretty good, right? As long as his redstone signal's on, he's gonna keep mining. The only thing we haven't figured out is chunk loading. Um, I don't know if we have a chunk loader aside from FTB chunks in here. Um, but I could just like chunk load, you know, I didn't even look to see if I'm building within chunk boundaries here. I'm not, I'm not, which is probably a bad idea, but meh, we'll see. 
But yeah, this should work, right? This should work. That's pretty cool. I like it. So let me let this run for a few minutes here, and then we'll come back and let the episode wrap up. Oh, FYI, I could have adjusted the sequence length, too, if I wanted to. But I, I made this 60, and that should be better. Because I think that I think that masks out to be a little bit tighter on the timing, closer to the three and a half minutes that I wanted. Actually, I should have made it 70. 70 is what I want, right? Because that's three and a half seconds. Yeah. All right, so we're getting close to the end of this timer. When he hits step 64, he should restart, right? So right now, he's getting here. He's going to fill up all the this stuff is going to deposit. And then he should hit step 64 shortly. And when he hits step two is when he'll move forward. Right? In theory, if I understand how this works. Step one on. Boom. And then mining. A few seconds later. Boom! <laughs> it's working. That's cool. So as long as that lever's on, he's going to mine. And then we turn the lever off and he stops running. But because this is not connected to the lever, he'll finish his current iteration, pull back up, and then be done. This only means move forward every three and a half minutes. So as long as my timing is correct on here, which I think it is, we'll find out if I'm off. But I think we'll be fine. Um... For now, it's wrapping up point for sure. It's well past wrapping up point. We're way past it. But for now, that was my signing off. Hope you enjoyed the extra long episode. Let me know what you think in the comments about this machine because I'm pretty pleased with it. For now, take it easy.